G'day folks, today we're going to be cleaning out the jungle that is the aquaponic system. Uh, I haven't had fish in there for quite some time so it's actually an organic hydroponic system if you will. Uh, for you folks who are new to the channel, I do have a load of other aquaponics clips if you want to uh, check them out. There'll be links at the end and also down in the description below. Uh, links to playlists that are complete builds of aquaponic systems and also some other handy bits and pieces that'll get you cracking on your own backyard system and also um, some Aquaponic 101 style clips in another playlist. So that should help you folks out if you want a, a bit of a binge watch of some Aquaponic content. Uh, and if you like it, feel free to hit that subscribe button as well and also the like button. So as you can see, she's a little bit overgrown. So I'll stop nattering on. Um, I might take you for a bit of a tour uh, just with the phone, just show you um, how bad some of it is. And then I'll get cracking to giving her a bit of a prune. So before we give this tomato plant some TLC and harvest all that fruit there, uh, I'll just give you a quick rundown of uh, the bed layout uh, for now for you folks who are new to the channel. We have three grow beds in operation at the moment. This one here, which has the tomato and some galangal, which is uh, called Thai ginger uh, by a lot of folks. Over here we have a bed which is on top of a sump tank, believe it or not. It's got a few bits and pieces like Okinawan spinach, mushroom herb from New Guinea, and I believe there's still some Brazilian spinach alive over there somewhere. This bed here has some true cardamom, uh, which is another spice they used a lot in Southeast Asian cooking, as well as a plant, which I'm told is from Vietnam, called Ho and Nok. Uh, that one there is looking a little bit nutrient deficient. There's some nice healthy um, leaf sections of it down here. Uh, this one here is a bit of a medicinal herb. We use it raw in salads and have tossed it in um, stir fries and that sort of thing. Uh, as you can see, the tomatoes ventured over here. Um, over the back here we have the um, Okinawan spinach growing over the top. Um, it's not looking too um, happy at the moment, but then again it is winter and it does prefer nice hot weather. Uh, it is flowering at the moment, um, producing some very nice looking flowers. Uh, for anyone who's curious, these guys do not propagate from seed. That's the, um, the Okinawan spinach, it only grows from cutting. So um, yeah, it's one of those plants you need to know someone who's got some to be able to grow it yourself. Now just over the back here is a fourth bed underneath all that mess of um, Okinawan spinach and I believe there's even some Warrigal greens growing in it. That bed is actually offline so the Warrigal greens is just growing from whatever rainwater is collected in there and I'd say some of the Okinawan spinach has set down roots as well uh, but that bed is actually out of operation at the moment. And this is that first tomato and galangal bed from another angle and as you can see that one tomato plant has decided to venture out towards our filters and all the way out to a small root pouch garden bed over here. And just to show you folks, there are no fish in here at the moment. There's just some um, fine solids that keep moving through the system that are collected on the bottom. Uh, normally you'd have fish in there and they'd knock those um, solids into suspension and they'd exit out through this solids lifting overflow um, down into the radial flow filter. And just down here is the um, fish emulsion I've been using to feed the system. I did have a very generous um, fellow Jeff send me some fish hydrolysate to use. So thank you very much, Jeff. And um, I might hit you up for some more soon. So now I suppose we should get into the uh, pruning. So to begin with, I'm just going to be um, chopping off all these sections in front of this grow bed. And all this greenery is just going to end up being um, uh, composted at the moment. So any fruit that I do come across though, that has just started to turn, uh, like this little section here, will be going into a bowl I have it set aside. And yeah, we'll ripen these guys up and we'll find a use for them. Um, whether we end up turning them into a bit of a chutney or a uh, tomato powder, we'll just have to wait and see. So down under here, there are a load of fruit that's starting to ripen. And I have a feeling I'm going to run out of space in my bowl. So there are some tomatoes here that are a little bit manky. Uh, some of them have dry, started to dry out. Some of them have been um, eaten by slugs and other pests. So I will have to go through later and fish them out. But I do think we might end up with enough to make a uh, decent batch of um, tomato sauce. So this old deer is nearly done. It looks like the majority of the really nice fruit is actually on this side of the plant. 
so there you go folks I think I'm pretty much all done just get some of these um, branches off here nip them off I'm leaving um, this little one section on here there's a, a leaf section on there uh, whether she does anything and bounces back I'm not too sure I might end up um, taking the whole plant out yet but I thought I'd just leave a little bit growing for now and I can guarantee you even though um, I'm going to pick as many of these little fellas out as I can I'm going to have volunteers pop up in this bed or wherever the media from this bed ends up in the future same with this Brahmi as you can see it's taken over the top of the bed and I dare say wherever I use this clay in the future I'm going to have little Brahmi plants pop up and there's my little beetroot that I missed ages ago that just kept on growing just to give you a bit of a look at her a little bit gnarly down the bottom being eaten by something dare I say slugs and she was just lost under all this mess of green and I couldn't find her so not something I'll probably uh, throw on the dinner table should be a little bit woody now I think so she can be composted with the tomatoes but yeah uh, I dare say we are going to be getting a load of volunteers um, just from all these dry tomato skins I'm seeing down here so there we go folks ended up with um, three of those bowls worth of tomatoes and as you can see there are a couple of manky ones in there um, if they're not too bad they'll end up in a sauce and then we do have these really nice looking ones as well these guys here will just be eating fresh as salads a couple of them not all of them a few folks who want to see a really awesome uh, yellow currant harvest clip uh, I did one a couple of years back you can check it out up there uh, it was just from a plant growing over the top of the old chook coop and we've got loads of fruit off that one so suss that out if you're interested so you wouldn't know it's winter by the look of this galangal um, she's very very green absolutely loves the aquaponics and I know she does so because she's got a new shoot there and a new shoot over the back but you can probably make out the problem here the root mass has grown so big under the clay it's pushing um, the clay out of the bed so I really do need to harvest that but I don't think I'll um, worry about doing it today it's getting a bit a little bit late in the afternoon so um, how about we have a bit of a poll um, there'll be a poll up there in the corner and you can vote to whether yes you want to see a gallangal harvest clip and I'll shoot it next week and upload it or um, I might just include it in an update depending on what you guys decide uh, but for now I think I'm pretty much all done with this bed um, I might just leave the Brahmi alone for a little while and I might focus on this hoe and knock and try and cut it back a little bit so at least I can see around the edge of the beds and also have a clear walkway down the back so this hoe and knock I really don't want to lose this plant so I don't want to chop it back too hard um, just enough to clear off a little bit of space um, so we can see what's going on with the grow beds themselves you might be able to make out down in here my poor little thyme plant I somehow think she's a little bit starved sunlight so she would have bit the dust ages ago just take back some of this as well I think some of this cardamom oh, I tell you what this smells absolutely awesome just down here we have a Brazilian spinach that looks like it may have ended up like the uh, time if it was left there much longer so oh, I might just leave that one for now see if it bounces back oh no there's another section of it over here looks a bit healthier so I might just um, nip this section off as well so this hoe and knock is actually ripped out of the uh, zip tie that was holding this 20% shade cloth in place oh that shade cloth by the way we just use it to keep the leaves from the tree next door out of the system uh, so what I'm thinking of doing is I will take that center spike out and um, yeah um, try and leave some of these younger bits and pieces down here fresh new stems that are growing from the plant and let them um, take over the job of um, her survival until things heat up and then I'll take a couple of clones off this and yeah she'll have to come out of the bed during the redesign so I better uh, stop nattering on because it's starting to get a little bit late and I'll chop down the side of here and we'll see how far we can get I think it might actually be easier if I start from this side here just found this warrigal green mixed up in there as well Just looking at all the uh, silver trails on top of this media I dare say I'm still having issues with slugs so 
time to take down this big lady. And there's one branch. Oh, and all the Okinawan spinach that's being supported by her. Here's another. Oh, it's a tough old lady. There we go. Just to show you how thick this Okinawan spinach was growing. It's just a mat. And this plant here is actually in the uh, bed over the top of the sump tank. So, yes, definitely uh, loves this climate. And does really well. And this plant has um, provided us with many, many meals. And it will do again because, I mean, even though I'm, I'm cutting it back quite ferociously, I should bounce back again in no time flat. Probably would be uh, easier if I just had a brush cutter and could just cut halfway down the bed here. So there we go. Ah, oh, locust. Oh, I missed him. Can't see where he went. Anyway. Oh wow, well, it looks like we've had some mushroom herb try to make it over here as well. Didn't quite do so well. Gotcha. Um, oh, and this here, growing through all of that, is a warrigal green plant that is surviving on whatever rainfall comes into this bed because this bed is offline so I might actually just pull her out I've got all this leaf matter here probably wasn't a good idea to let this get as bad as it has, hey? this is going to be a pain to tidy up all this clay so it's been a couple of days since I started the clean out. I've just been busy doing some more uh, moving in and renovating in the house. Uh, but I thought I'd just bring you up to speed. We have some mushroom, herb and knocking down spinach cuttings just in this jar of water. Um, hopefully they'll set roots fairly quickly and I can pop them in another project I've got on the cards. But for now I'm just keeping them down here on the aquaponic system. Uh, just shaded a little bit by this cardamom plant. I did start to clean out the other beds. Uh, get rid of all that mat of Okinawan spinach. The plant that has spawned all this growth is actually situated in the grow bed over the top of the sump tank. And as you can see from these sections to the left, um, it does like to send down roots very easily. Uh, this grow bed here had no water running through it. It was just whatever was collecting uh, from the rainfall. As you can see down there, the bell siphon's been removed and the drain's just running straight to the ground down there. That's the actual drain pipe that runs into the sump tank. So, um, very opportunistic plant and will get away from you if it's um, given the right um, conditions. Uh, these bits here I could technically pull out and pop in another area in the yard, uh, but I think I'll um, just stick with my cuttings from now. Uh, the mother plant, as you can see, uh, she's uh, quite a monster. So hopefully we'll see a couple of shoots come from um, this plant here. And I also noticed there is another rooted section down in that corner over there. So I'll definitely have some more greenery come along that I can strike to create our new plants. So this bed here didn't really have a lot in it other than bits and pieces from here and some older sections of the mushroom herb which I've chopped out. Um, this plant here, a little bit leggy but then again she's not getting a lot of sunlight. And there's the Brazilian spinach. It appears to be going okay. Uh, so I got loads of propagation material for that. Uh, the one big surprise has been this cardamom. Um, she's done so well that she's burst out of the pot and has a few um, little shoots up the side there and a larger section there. Uh, so obviously she needs to come out of here because we need to um, pull the whole system down for the rebuild. So I'm probably going to um, propagate quite a few smaller plants from those root sections. So I'll just give you one more tour of what she looks like folks. As you can see, a lot tidier around this side now. And down around here the same and I have a lot better access to get into the sump tank um, for filling it up and just seeing how things are going and also too I was using a lot of water over the last couple of weeks and I was concerned that I may have leaks in the system uh, but as it turns out no leaks so what I think has happened is basically with the warmer temperature now we're coming towards the end of winter um, the plants were just using a lot more and I was noticing a lot more newer growth on the Okinawan spinach, particularly over the back there. So, so as for when I'll uh, have this as an operational aquaponic system and not just an um, organic hydroponic jungle, uh, we've probably got until the uh, about November 
um, the end of spring until the jade perch fingerlings become available. So I've got a fair bit of time to uh, knock off what I need to with the house renovations uh, and then hook into the redesign here with the aquaponics. So you'll all be uh, kept up to date on what's happening with that. I would really like to thank you all for um, sticking by the channel and coming along and leaving your comments and thumbing it up. If there's something useful that you watch on the channel, it'd be fantastic if you could share it with your family and friends. Uh, it helps me out with a couple more views. Every thousand views, I get another couple of cents. And of course, I've got to thank those marvellous folks over on the YouTube membership program, also Subscribestar, and those that are donating by PayPal. I really do appreciate it, folks. I mean, uh, the fact that you guys get some, enough out of these clips to want to support us that way, I really do appreciate it. So kudos to you all, and thank you very much. Uh, also, too, I do have a list of super contributors, folks that go above and beyond. Uh, you'll find their um, websites and Facebook pages down in the description below. It would be fantastic if you could go on them, click on one or two of them, see what they're about and show them some love. I'd really appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, I will pretty much all leave it there. I do hope your aquaponics and your gardens are booming, and I will catch you next clip. Cheers, folks. Have a top one. And here's a bit of a look at how the tomatoes were used for you folks who like to stick around to the end. Uh, the majority of the ripe ones were just cut in half and then added to a pot along with some onions and a clove of elephant garlic and then a sliced up zucchini was added in just before we were ready to serve it as a sauce. And the semi-ripe and green tomatoes were used along with some capsicum and onion to make some very tasty sweet mustard pickles. Cheers all, have a top one. Just a quick heads up, there's a bonus clip, link right at the bottom of the description. Hope you enjoy it. Cheers all.